जय श्री माता जी Let us all bow down to Shri Mata Ji. Raise our Mother Kundalini and put bandhan. Let us place both our hands on Mother Earth. हे भूमि देवी वी थैंक यू फॉर सस्टेनिंग अस एंड वी सीक योर फॉरगिवनेस दैट वी टच यू विथ अवर फीट माता जी काइंडली ब्लेस एस ऑल विथ कंप्लीट बैलेंस ऑन अवर ईडा एंड पिंगला नाड़ी Shri Mata Ji, kindly dissolve all our ego and super ego.
Let us bring both our hands back in our lap. Let us bring our attention in our first thought. Let us place our right hand on our sastra and give it a little massage. Shri kindly bless us all in the state of Nirvicharita. Both hands back in our lap. And let us continue to keep our attention in our sastra. And in this state, let us now listen to Shamataji's speech. Before, in the garden, you would go and collect all the thorns and put them in your body. That was the situation never looked at the flowers. And suddenly, after realization, you'd be amazed. You just see flowers and don't bother about thoughts. Or if you find, you take them out. There is joy even before realization and after realization, but there's no capacity to enjoy. That capacity comes to you after realization. And the main thing that happens to you is the discretion. Then like the swan, you just take the milk of everything. At everything, your attitude becomes very different. Start seeing things in a different angle. Like once we had to go to one very ancient uh, temple to see some art. Me, my son-in-law and my daughter, we were walking up. We had to walk for miles up the hill. And they were very tired, so we went into one temple and just laid down ourselves. They were so tired. At that time I said, see these elephants, see how beautiful they are. Everyone has a different type of a uh, tail and a different type of a trunk, the poses are different, so many of them are like that. My son-in-law said, Baba, we are so tired, how are you looking at these things? Because attention didn't go to my tiredness, but to those beautiful things. Same thing, you start sucking in the milk. There is joy, but you cannot feel the joy because the power, that subtle power of divine discretion is not there. 
Once that comes in, you start enjoying everything. It's just the same. Life is just the same, nothing has changed. Same house, same family, same city, same environment, but you start enjoying. Because the sensitivity of your Kamsa Chakra is now only for divine discretion and you immediately know, and then you don't want to do anything with the thorns. Only want to gather flowers and you know how to gather flowers and you are in joy. So the light of the Spirit which shines through your Hamsa Chakra gives you wisdom. Wisdom doesn't mean that you know how to argue things or you fight with people, no, it doesn't mean that. Wisdom means how you take to the good side of everything to enjoy it. This is wisdom. And that you avoid all destructive things and take to something constructive. Now you are going, say, on a road, and it's written there, there's danger. Before realization, they will say, all right, let's see what is danger, they'll jump into it, and say that we have got nirvana by killing themselves, such explanations. But a sensible man will say, all right, danger, go back, what's the harm, after all? He preserves himself, he respects his life, because he knows now he has become the instrument of God. So wisdom comes to you automatically, but through experience then you know this is the right path. Through experience you start understanding. Nowadays I'm telling all these things to you. Say, if twenty years back I never talked of these things to them, because I knew if I start talking they'll say, oh, she's talking something out of the blue, God knows if it is true or not. But once the wisdom becomes transparent and you start seeing through it everything very clearly, makes your mind absolutely clear, then Anybody who tells things of wisdom, you never feel bad about it. On the contrary, you thank that I'm so lucky that I can hear about these things, such nice things. And also those sayings start giving you joy. So with the ear, you hear so many things, used to hear the same things, might be hearing so much music, everything before also, but it never gave you joy. Now because of this transformation, the same music which you heard before now makes you feel as if you are in the seventh heaven, it gives you ecstasy. The poetry which was quite mundane, ordinary, people told me, Mother, it was such a headache to read William Blake in those days, but now we love it, we read it like Bible. Because now you have developed new sight, new hearing power. All these are called in Sanskrit the Atindriya, means the organs which are subtle organs within us. So eyes have a subtle organ, ears have a subtle organ, and these subtle organs then start emitting such responses to all the surroundings that you just gather whatever is beautiful. Say it is uh, very dark, normally you'll be frightened, but if it is very dark, you say, oh, it's very good. How we are enjoying, you know, it's such a venture something, you'll go slowly, slowly holding each other's hand. Supposing it is very hot, then if somebody says, people may start, I don't know what they would do. Another would just say, 
It was quite nice day. You see, it's nice sometimes to have hot is also very good like that. If it is cold, the other way down. So this you start enjoying every aspect which is supposed to be very, very bad for others. To you, you know the aspect of that what is to be enjoyed. That part which is to be enjoyed. And once you know how to do it, then you say we are swimming in the ocean of joy. The ocean is the same, but now you are just touching those beautiful drops uh, from rosia which are in that ocean. And the rest are worried of getting drowned. Same ocean, same world. That's why they say it's a maya. But after this discretion is shining, there's no maya, you start enjoying. It's like this, supposing you drop somebody in the ocean, he'll be so frightened and he'll die before even he's sunk really. But supposing a person there is with all his uh, things to watch and he's the one who is going to see all the beauty of the underworld, he's very nicely secured, he's got beautiful glasses and all that and he's wearing nice paddles, he doesn't have to bother. He just goes there, nicely enjoys everything, takes photographs. The ocean is the same. For him or for the one who is dropped in the ocean. But the one who is secured, one who has all the equipments, the one who knows what is to be seen, is enjoying it. In the same way you are equipped with wisdom, with security, and you know what you are doing. And the same thing starts becoming so very beautiful and enjoyable. I have seen how Sajog is enjoy everything, even if somebody is uh, shouting or saying something in a hall, I have seen, all the Sajog is start laughing, 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 you know. His poor man trying his level best to condemn everything, and here all the surgeon is just laughing at him, doing nothing, and that fellow runs away. It is something so... <laughs> they are enjoying his stupidity. So the whole attitude of life is so changed because of this hamsa chakra. And you are not even aware that you have developed that wisdom automatically. Then you start also consolidating it and making it your own enlightened faith, because every time you see it, whatever you believe in just works out. You see, suddenly you find that things are brought to you without your knowledge, without any effort, which you have been trying to get to. People suddenly meet you and you are helped. So many things happen. Recently somebody came from India and he had said that, I would like to meet somebody at Milan station. So we sent somebody, but he was wearing a very small little badge, so this gentleman couldn't see him. And uh, he was watching for somebody there. Suddenly he saw one gentleman standing, like a Sahaja very relaxed, watching everybody, not running, not upset. He went and asked him, did you come for me? Yes, yes, yes. I was wondering, I thought it is you only who has come. <laughs> so you make them out because their styles are different, their uh, standing uh, methods are different, their talking is different, the way they behave. It's all, you see, is a miracle the way the whole life and personality is changed. Once uh, my husband had taken a Sajogi to a library 
in British Library and people are very rude there. So they were late by about one or two minutes and it was closing down. The fellow just started shouting at him. So the surgeon said, yes, I agree, you see, we are late, but you know, these traffics don't understand any laws that this library closes at this time, you know. They don't understand the traffic, you see, they wouldn't listen to us. We told them the library is closing, you see. <laughs> we'll start. But they wouldn't understand, it's so important, you know, the traffic was stopping us. And uh, we are sorry, uh, we are here so late, but next time we'll not do like that. The fellow got absolutely uh, so flabbergasted and the whole thing melted away. He said, all right, come along. He opened the library for one hour after that. <laughs> so the wisdom of handling people, wisdom of talking to them, wisdom of handling your jobs, everything starts working out. And if it doesn't work, you don't feel bad. You think, what to do? The other fellow is not a surgeon. You try, it's what can be done. Like this time when we were coming, there was a nice gentleman who has done such a guy, a, something like a, a manager in the KLM and all that. So he came and told me there's a little difficulty that there's no seat for others, only three persons and first class can go. It's impossible, he's a friend of mine, he just can't help. I said, all right. Went and sat on the chair, I did like this. Only, I think, three times must have. Been. Oh, there are six seats already there. <laughs> From where did they come? So then you start seeing one point very clearly, ki there is this all-pervading power which is very active, which is watching us. All the great saints are managing things. Or sometimes, you feel as if the angels are with you. How they are guiding things, how they are helping us, how they are there, how it is working out. Then you start seeing all that. Then you start knowing it and believing in it. Then this discretion settles down. Till that stage it is settled down, it's quite possible that Sajogis might slip out of Sajog. I have known many that they come to Sahaja Yoga and they slip out on small, small points like that. Some other Sahaja Yogi of their style only can say something harsh to them, they slip out. Because on the periphery we have all kinds of people. And on the periphery if you stop and somebody says something to you, then they drop out. Because they have not reached that state of discretion, that this is the right place, I mean, if another is wrong, he'll get out, why should I get out? The growth is only possible when your hamsa is put right. Without that, till you are completely there, it's very difficult. But once the hamsa is established, I have seen people become really very dedicated. As you know, it's a very big organization we have all over the world. I have no secretary, I have no organization, I have nothing like a office also. But everything, everybody is my secretary. Everybody is working it out on their own. They are identified with it. They are responsible for it. I don't have, I'm like a plug, they put me here, all right, there, there, it's all right, wherever they put me. <laughs> I have only this much of discretion that they are my children, they'll not do anything to harm me, they'll look after me. Sometimes, of course, uh, it could be quite um, hectic, could be very fast movement, whatever else, but I, I don't mind. Because they are doing so much for Sahaja and they want to do it more and more, and they are so responsible. So, I respect it. Sometimes people say, Mother, what a 
horrible schedule you have, you can't bear to see it, you see it's too much, how will you do this? I can do it, because I have absolute faith in their identification with Sahaja Yoga. They are not cheats, they are not hypocrites, they are not doing for their own being, own self, but they are doing it to help Sahaja Yoga, to help others. So the identification that you develop with other wrong things just drops out. Then you start identifying yourself with beautiful things because you start getting the fragrance of the beauty. Then you start enjoying that beauty and your heart starts opening out. All this joy and all these things are not possible if your Hamsa is still infected with ego or with conditionings. We have so many conditionings, like Hindus, like Christians, like this, like that. These conditionings are so much, such false things we are following. But once we give up all these conditionings in the faith that we are doing it, for our benevolence, this, agya, this chakra opens out very well. Without this, agya cannot open. I mean, you see, it's an entry to agya, it's entry to Vishuddhi, it's entry to all the chakras of your head, the pithas that are there. So it's so important to keep your Hamsa Chakra clean. I have also told lots of things that can keep the Hamsa Chakra clean, which you all should use. I mean, on the physical level, also on mental level, I have told you what you have to do is to study your mind. See the beauty of anything and not the vulgarity of it, not the utility of it, but the beauty. Slowly, slowly you'll find your eyes will become cleaner and cleaner. People are now so much in Sahaja Yoga, because of their depth maybe, because of their um, seeking maybe, because of their Purva janna, Janmas maybe, or whatever it is. But this Hamsa Chakra does the greatest thing, about which I do not know if you are aware or not, that whatever are your karma phalas are finished. You are not responsible for your forefathers' karma phalas, your country's karma phalas, or your own personal karma phalas. Whatever wrong you have done is finished, as if you are cut off from your past completely. Once this is established, then all mistakes, all wrongdoings, not only of you, of your relations, of your forefathers, of your family, of your country, of this world, anything doesn't touch you, you are aloof from it. And in this Kruti Yuga where this Brahma Chaitanya is trying to expose and to punish people for their past karmas, collectively also, country-wise also, will not be able to even touch you, because the light of this centre is extremely powerful, and you will be redeemed of all the fears of whatever you have done before. You'll just be beautiful like lotuses which have come out of the mire and 
you will emit beautiful fragrance all around the world. May God bless you. Mahamantras
थैंक यू श्रीमात जी फॉर ऑल द जॉय एंड ब्लेसिंग्स थ्रू दिस ब्यूटीफुल मॉर्निंग मेडिटेशन लेट अस ऑल बाउ डाउन टू श्रीमात जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडली इनपुट बंधन let us meet again tomorrow morning same time jai shri mata ji